Hi, wildlife, adventure, and landscape photographers. Alaskan photographer Jeff Schultz here again. Today you'll learn about the tripods that I use and why I chose to use those and buy those. Be sure to download my free essentials kit when you have time for starting your own photo gear. I enjoy making long exposures of water to get that silky look. And a tripod, of course, is necessary. One of my first adventures to that was in Yosemite National Park as a teenager. The light was great. To get the tripod to the height and angle I wanted, I fought and fought and fought with the tripod legs. I fought with the feet not sticking to the moss. I fought with the water vibrating against the legs. By the time I got it set up, the light was gone. So that lesson really taught me that it's essential to understand the tripod before I buy it, not only how to use it, but how to use it correctly. My motto is go fast, go light, go simple. I choose my equipment based on those principles. So here's some things to consider when buying a tripod. Now, first off, know that tripods for landscape photography and wildlife with long lenses is an essential tool. We absolutely need it but it is the least creative. It is rigid, it's hard, it's not the way our minds think. So to that end, they're frustrating, I get that. So really the best tripod for you is how you use it. Everybody's gonna be different. And it's also a personal choice of tripods. I have friends that I show my tripod and they go, that's crazy, why would you use that? And vice versa, I look at their tripod and I go, that just doesn't fit me. So it's a personal choice. So with that in mind, if you possibly can, go visit the camera store before you buy a tripod. We're fortunate here in Anchorage, Alaska to have Stewart's Photoshop, who loaned me some of these tripods, um, but they have a huge selection of tripods all over the board. So go to a camera store that has a really good selection, ideally not one that gets a kickback for selling certain brands. And another big deal, in my opinion, is to buy the legs separate from the head. Ideally, I would not buy a tripod that has a head built onto it already. They typically are just not as good. And oftentimes you can't switch them out if there's a problem. So again, for me, it's go fast, go light, go simple. That's my motto. So your first choice is carbon fiber or aluminum. That's the big deal. Carbon fibers, much more expensive, but a lot lighter weight. And aluminum is, of course, less expensive and heavier. Um, they both have their pros and cons, and I'll get into that a little bit here. And then it's the locks. What type of lock do you want? So you basically have two choices. You have the twist lock like this, or you have the flip lock like this, a lever. Which do you prefer? Well, it's going to depend on what you're doing and how you like to work. There's a third kind of lever uh, that Manfrotto makes on a lot of their tripods now, which I totally don't like at all because I pinch my fingers on them. Here's a photo of that. I'll tell you from my experience, I like the levers better. To me, they're faster and more simple and more sure, quick and easy. But that said, they also have a tendency to get loose and you have to retighten this screw every so often. So that's a deterrent. The twist locks are very good. I have several tripods with those, but they do take just a little bit longer. And so that's the only thing. Go light, go fast, go simple. I prefer the levers, but either one will do the trick. So then the question is, well, how many locks do you get? Do you get a really small tripod like this little two that has four different locks and comes all the way out like that? I say no. Having four of those to do just takes that much longer. Go fast, go light, go simple. So to me, that's way too many. <clears throat> three is the maximum that I would want. My Gitzo tripod has three locks. My two different Manfrotto's have only two locks. So that's a detriment as far as space is concerned. 
So this Mi Photo one is definitely much more compact. I would say throw the compactness out the window. Don't bother with that. Don't make that your decision. This tripod, yes, it's taller, but it is much more flexible, more sturdy, and better than something small like this that has so many locks. Now the question comes into play about how to lock the legs. So as a landscape photographer, it's a big deal when you lock your legs out. Where is the spot that you want to lock them? So I contend that having your legs have the ability to lock into different positions is a big deal. Ideally, it clicks into place. And how fast can you do that? So with this Manfrotto, they have this new lever right here that makes it really fast and easy. I really like that. Versus this Manfrotto, which requires you to push your thumb in and pull. And doing both of those at the same time with this leg that is pretty stiff is hard to do. It's very hard to do. So that's a factor if you're a landscape photographer and you like to get low. Versus this Benro tripod, which has this really simple to flip out unlocking mechanism. But the problem with this, it only has two spots where it can lock. Way out like that and then like that. Now you might not find that that big of a deal, but I tend to in my landscape photography. So the next issue at hand is center column or no center column. I contend if you're doing wildlife photography with long lenses, you don't need a center column. There's no need because you're typically not micro adjusting things like this Benro here or many other models that don't have center columns. I disagree with photographers that say they don't want a center column, especially for landscape photography. Um, they contend that when you get up higher that it's less sturdy. Yeah, that's true, it's physics. But it's not that big of a deal, at least in my opinion and my experience. But here's where the big difference comes in on why I want a center column. And that is because when I'm composing, I don't put the, tri the camera on the tripod first. That's the worst thing to do. So what it's the reason I was fighting with my tripod in Yosemite. What I do is I find the composition first. Am I up or I down? Once I find the composition, I measure it on my body or wherever I'm at. And then I adjust the tripod to that location. But I put the tripod about six inches lower than this particular spot. So what that does is that allows me the opportunity to just gently move the center column up or down in order to find the exact location I want. Sometimes it's a little bit lower, sometimes it's a little bit higher. And it's amazing when you start looking at your landscape photos in that separation between a twig and a mountain or, or the sky and some water that you want a particular spot. So I contend that having a center column is a huge advantage, but at the same time, I don't want that center column to be in the way. So what do I do? I buy a tripod where the center column can flip easily. So with this Manfrotto, if I push the bottom of the tripod here, it flips over very easily. And now, once the tripod is lower, it makes it a whole lot easier. And this Gitzo tripod is even better yet, in my opinion. <clears throat> and that is, that this, I can move the center column just by doing that. And now the center column is out of the way. I can get super close to the ground with this particular tripod. All the way there, all the way there. And with an L bracket, I can get practically ground level. That's a big deal as a landscape photographer in my opinion. So this is one of my go-to tripods for landscape photography. So then another thing to consider are the tripod legs themselves. You want something that's sturdy. It has to hold up your camera. So I suggest that you, when you go to the store, take the tripod out, undo the legs, and then just bang on it. Is it is it vibrating? Is it shaky? Does it feel sturdy to you? I think you'll find that smaller travel tripods like this 
just don't hold up to that. But there's a time and a place for a tripod like this. But that's why I have four or five different tripods for different uses. But I think you'll find that these tripods with the bigger, heavier legs are going to be better. So then the final question is, what do I use? Well, again, for me, it's go fast, go light, go simple. So I have two basic types of tripods, a car slash wildlife tripod and a landscape tripod. These are my two car wildlife tripods. I have a Manfrotto aluminum one that is the fastest thing going. With two flips, they fall out that fast. And they fall out because this is aluminum, really slick and easy. Boom, boom. That one's down and ready to go. It does have a center column so that I can do some micro adjusting. The center column can change out and, and not be there at all. So that's a plus for me. This is my go-to tripod from the car. My other car and wildlife tripod is this Gitzo. It's heavy duty. It does have a center column. You don't have to use it. It's no big deal. And it has the twist locks. So that is very sturdy. As I mentioned, my two landscape tripods are a Gitzo and another Manfrotto. The beauty of these is the fact that the center column can go sideways and I can get really low. So they're both down in my description down below. So again, my motto is go fast, go light, go simple. Those would be the tripods that I recommend. So those are the tips I have on choosing a tripod. Remember, it has to be right for you. Be sure to consider everything that you do in your photography before buying it. And please visit your camera store like we have here in Anchorage at Stewart's. Buy the legs separate from the head. <clears throat> go fast, go light, go simple. Be sure to download my essentials kit to get off on the right foot for your photography kit.